Hello again, everybody. I hope you're enjoying working all these different insects or bugs. Today we're going to do the bumblebee at the top of the bug box. And we're going to mainly use turkey rug stitch or a giordis knot, it's sometimes called. I want to show you on the practice hoop first. So thread up something and don't put a knot in it. And then if we imagine I was going to fill this square here, I would take my needle down, not in the corner, but just a little way away. And I'm going to leave a tail hanging there. You can put your thumb on it, in fact. And then go to the left. And then to the right. And don't pull this thread through yet. So you've got a loop at the top and then come up in the middle of that loop in the same hole or just next to where you originally have that thread. And now you can pull it through. Now, if I were to cut that off there, that would be my first stitch, but we're not going to cut it. We're going to loop it round and take another stitch now this is going if you imagine this as a half stitch length so that's going to go down and then we're going to go to the left of it so next to your stitch now make a loop go down to the right and then come up in the middle and pull it through. Make another loop, this time at the bottom. Take your needle down, go to the left, and then to the right. Make that loop at the top, come up through the loop, and pull it through. So that is your stitch length and that's why I'm only going down half a stitch length away because I'm coming up on that side and going down on the other side of it there. And then coming up through that loop. And that would be my first row. You can then cut this off and start a second row in exactly the same way immediately on top. And you can see that you could do that in different colours, which is where the colours of the bumblebee come in. I'm just going to show left handers before I go back to the actual bee. So imagine I wanted to cover this area here as a left hander. I would go down just a little way from the end. So no knot, leave the loop hanging and then come up to the right. Go down on the left. And then come up where your original thread was and pull through. And then take a loop on the bottom and go down a half a stitch away from the end of the stitch. And then come up at the end of the last stitch and down. Leave the loop at the top and come through the loop in the middle and pull through. So then make a loop at the bottom go 
and uh, come up at the right, go down on the left, and come up in the middle and pull through and so on and then you can cut off your thread when you get to the end and start again there for the bumblebee we're going to use the gray and the lemon and orange thread alternately we're going to do approximately three rows of each color starting with the gray so this is going to make a nice bit of fluff when we cut off the loops. So to start, there's not really um, a lot of room at the end. You've just got the tip. So we're going to do one stitch going down right at the tip and then come to the left of it a little bit and down on the right. And then up through that loop. And that's your first stitch. And now you can cut that off. Useful to have some scissors handy. And then your second row is going to be a little way to the right of the line. So not on the line. And then you're going to go to the left, which makes it on the line, to the right of the stitch, make a loop, and then come up through the loop. Now we're going to make a little loop on this side and take a stitch just to the right of the previous stitch up to the end of that stitch, make a loop down on the line, and then come up through it in the centre there. And that's the second little row and you can cut that off. And then we're going to do another one. So come up just to the right of the line, leave the tail, and then come up on the line. Oops, my tail's disappearing. And then take it to the right of that tail to make your loop at the top go through. Make your loop at the bottom this time. So my stitch now is a bit further away from where I finished. So now I'm going up where I finished. Make my loop and come through. And that's my third row. And now I can take my lemony orange thread and start on this side again leave the tail go to the right down on the left sorry down on the down on the right so you're going to the left and the right and then up through the loop. Now leave a little loop. Go down a little bit of a distance away from the end of that stitch. And then to the left and the right. And up in the middle. I don't think I've got enough room to do another stitch, so we'll cut that off. And then start again. So let me see if I can get my rights and lefts sorted. 
So we'll go to the left of that stitch, to the right and up through the loop and make a little loop. And to the right and up through the loop and now I'm going to do another one and cut off now you can see that one of my loops is quite small there, that's fine. Um, you don't need them massive because they're going to get cut short anyway later. So I'm going to do another row of the yellow. Good idea to make your stitches quite small for this, quite close together. It'll make a fluffier bee. Now I've done three rows, so I will return to my grey thread. And so we're going to go up the body. Obviously, you'll be able to get more stitches in as you go further up. And continue all the way to the head. This very tip here, we want to make sure is done in a contrast, a, a couple of stitches of the yellow. So try and organise it that you get the yellow as a contrast with the grey, just for the head here. So I'm going to do a little bit more up to here and then I'll return and show you. I'm now right at the top of my B and I want to put a couple of stitches for the, the tip of the head here in the yellow. So I've made sure that I've got yellow at the end of my thread. So I'm just going to put those couple of stitches there and don't worry if this means that you only you have different numbers of rows of the grey and the orange in order to get to the yellow so I think I've only got two of each right at the end depends how it works out really so let's just do those couple of stitches One more. Cut that off. And now comes the exciting bit or the scary bit, whichever way you want to look at it. And we're going to cut these loops that we've made here. Um, before you do that, just check all the way around that you've covered the area on the lines because you can always put the odd stitch in 
you can do it afterwards but just check that you've covered your lines and then you can cut your loopy bits and you could have done this as you go the, the loops don't worry if you miss some And then what we're going to do is cut, just cut them off, cut everything down. And it's best doing this gradually because you can't put it back. You need a really quite sharp pair of scissors to do this. And sometimes they need to be shorter around the edges than on top. Just keep going. Be careful not to cut into your hexagon. Is it starting to look like a bee? Maybe. It needs a little bit more. I'm going to um, tidy that up now off camera because I need to get around to the other side and have a look at it. And then I'll show you what it looks like. When you've got about this far, I would just leave him and see what you think. And you'll find that when you look at him from different angles, you can see odd bits that need cutting off. I can see one there, for example. So we're going to now do the legs and they are done in Quaker stitch, which I'm going to show you on the practice hoop first. If you look at the legs of bees, they're actually quite thick. And I didn't want to do just the stem stitch or a split back stitch, but wanted to make the line a little bit denser. So we're using a Quaker stitch and this is a mixture of split back stitch and stem stitch. So if you're right handed, take a stitch down along your line and come up right at the top of it. And then you're going to keep your thread at the bottom as a right hander and do a stitch as if it's a normal stem stitch, but come up through the end of that stitch like you would for a split back stitch and then take a stitch down. So it's a normal stem stitch action, if you like. So come up through that stitch and take a stitch down, keeping your thread at the bottom. If you're left handed, 
you'll start on the other end and kit your thread at the top just like you would for a normal stem stitch. So just keep going down the line instead of coming up at the end you actually split the stitch and it makes the line a little bit thicker. So we'll try that on the legs of the bee and we're going to use the grey silk. So dependent on where your bee has ended up you might need to extend your legs a little bit out to the side. So come up at the end, take a stitch. I'm now aiming for the outside of my line and then come up just on top of that stitch. Take a stitch down and come up through that stitch, splitting it like that. The other way to make your line a bit thicker would be to whip it, but it's quite hard with all this in the way. So this is a good alternative. And I'm trying to sneak one in at the end. Now to finish your thread, just go over that last stitch and sneak your needle underneath the stitch like that. And then we're going to do the other leg and then the, the wings. I've done the other leg. In fact, while I've got the thread, I'm going to just do some straight stitches on top here. we go. Let's do the wings. The wings of a bee are quite fine and so I'm using standard sewing cotton, a sort of taupey grey colour, and I've outlined the wing in a split back stitch, um, which is quite hard to do to find the, to get to actually split the stitch. And then all I'm going to do is to do a couple of straight stitches inside the wing. Let me find the right place here. Like that. And that. You can put more if you wish and now I'll do the other one in the same way and show you when it's done. My completed bumblebee.